morning room at this time. Her ladyship was never in the morning room before 11. Kindly attend to the matter, will you, Edward? Oh, yes, Mr. Watson. Upstairs, luncheon's ordered early today, Mrs. Bridges. Half past 12, Mr. Watson. Madam's going to a sale in Paddington. Is that for their luncheon? <laughs> Cottage pie. And it used to be game pie and potato straws. Might as well let Ruby do the cooking. Send me on a holiday. We have a solid worth, Mrs. Bridges. And provided we keep our standards at least below stairs, perhaps our example will serve us a... You, she wants to see Mr. Hudson. Oh, very good, my dude. Oh, and uh, you best go up and give Captain James his tweet suit, we blush it. Oh, yes, Mr. Cottage pie. Uh, you wish to see me, madam? Oh, yes. Good morning, Hudson. Madam. I'm, uh, I'm a little worried about Rose. She looks very tired. Madam? I have asked her if she can manage, and, and she assures me she can, but... Well, I wondered what you thought. I think it depends on how much entertaining Captain James and yourself plan for the coming autumn, madam. Well, I think Mr. Bellamy will continue to lead a quiet life. As to Captain James and myself, I, I think we shall too. Quite, madam. So it will be a fairly quiet autumn. Then I presume you would wish the question of an underhouse parlourmaid to be deferred for the time being, madam. Yes, I would. Very good, madam. <laughs> Hello, the Bellamy residence. <clears throat> oh. Uh, would you be requiring Mr. Richard, Captain, or Mrs. James Bellamy? Um, perhaps Mrs. James. May I say who it is? The Comtesse de is calling from the Savoy Hotel. Oh, uh, hold the line one moment, if you please. <clears throat> uh, the Comtesse de Tournay, madam, wishing to speak to you. Who? The Comtesse de Tournay from the Savoy Hotel. Oh, thank you, Hudson. Madam. Hello. Is that Mrs. James Bellamy? Yes, it is. Here is the Comtesse de I don't think we've met. No, I don't think we have. How do you do? I am acquainted with Mr. Richard Bellamy. He is still at this address? My father-in-law. Yes, he still lives here. Oh, you did? Where did you just arrive from? Vienna. I find myself passing through London on my way to New York, so, of course, I must telephone. A cousin of mine in Paris, the Baroness Richter, you must know her, told me that poor Lady Marjorie went down in that ship, and her son is since married, and you are all still at Eaton Place, so I should like to call on you. Richard may not remember me well. It was many years ago at the Hoffmannstahls. I'm sure my father-in-law would be delighted to see you. Perhaps you would care to come and dine with us during your stay in London. Oh, we should like that very much. How charming of you. Uh, when may we come? May I suggest half past eight on Wednesday evening? Wednesday evening. We should be so pleased. Half past eight? That will be delightful. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Bellamy. <laughs> There, did I not tell you it was quite simple? You have achieved for us a good dinner, if not a weekend, if not more. <laughs> Richard Bellamy's wife was a Southwold. A lot of money there. Here it is in Burke's directory. Southwold, Earl of... Sister living... Unless she is not, neither is he. Lady Marjorie Helen Sibyl Talbot Carey. Born July 12th, 1864. Married Richard Arthur Pemberton Bellamy. Residence 165 Eaton Place, SW1. And yet the son's wife invited us. Well, she will be mistress of that house now, Mrs. James Bellamy. No, not in here yet. And please remind your sister once more, where did I meet Richard Bellamy? At the Hoffman Stars in Vienna some 15 years ago. And how old does that make me? Huh? <laughs> Very well, a few years ago. Now. Finish unpacking, Lily, whilst I go and sketch the grey, dull river Thames. Oh, I wish you would paint in your own room. 
I have no river Thames, only ugly chimneys. Would you care to change with me? Do you think the apricot chiffon becomes me better than the velvet? For a middle-aged English gentleman, the velvet, so sophisticated. Oh, everything creased. I seem to spend my whole life packing and unpacking. Why is that? That's because you're never satisfied. I've had to spend the earth on this dress. If that stupid lady Digby Cave in Monte Carlo had not interfered, her husband would have bought it for me. When you look like that, sister, you are irresistible. <laughs> I'm sure the dress will prove an excellent investment. Don't distress yourself. Well, it had better be. It's the last of what we have. Small wonder you inspire passion wherever you go. While you sketch and you paint and... If you... one has a pretty sister, why not make use of her? I have talent with my brush. You have other talents, and so one must subsidize the other. Huh. Well, Rose. <laughs> You're not to be made of all work any longer, but head house parlourmaid again. It's not before time, neither. We are engaging an underhouse parlourmaid forthwith. What's more, before Wednesday. Uh -huh. What's so special about Wednesday? Uh, there will be guests for a dinner party on Wednesday evening, Mrs. Bridges. Guests for a dinner party? Oh, that makes a change. Back in the swim again, are we, Mr. Hudson? Oh, well, I'll have to have Ruby back in the kitchen full time again. Oh, naturally, Mrs. Bridges. That means the kitchen sink for you, Ruby. Lovely. <laughs> what sort of guests, Mr. Hudson? Uh, they will be of a continental nature. Oh. That means they'll be foreign. Mm. Not German, I hope. French, Mrs. Bridges. French. French? <laughs> oh, la la. <laughs> I wish you were not so afflicted with integrity, Kurt. Then you could take a rich bride, and I should not be obliged to look for a rich husband. <laughs> this Mrs. James Bellamy, what is she like, do they say? Young, beautiful? A pleasant woman, I have heard, but without style. Her husband? He has an eye, they say, for a pretty face and was once the subject of much gossip. Oh, respectable women put up with anything rather than make a fuss. They always lose their husbands in the end. <laughs> At least I lost mine by my own bad behaviour. Uh. Well, there is some dignity in that. And this uh, Richard Bellamy, the father, he is very rich, you say, and not too old. He lives in a bon quartier, Belgravia. Butler opens the door, he belongs to the best clubs, of course he's rich. Such Englishmen always are. The more Philistine they are, the richer they remain. You see, here in England they have nothing to spend their money on but horses, fishing rods, guns and clubs. <laughs> <laughs> there must be a limit to that. Should I become Mrs. Richard Bellamy, all that would have to change. I think I should like to have a salon to uh, patronize the arts. I would make landscape painting fashionable, my dear. Admirable. But tonight we must find a cheap little cafe somewhere and buy our own dinner. Yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is this we're eating? Cottage pie. Oh. Is it? Well, I think it's delicious. Mrs. Bridges has quite excelled herself. Do you not like it, Richard? What? The food. Food? Yeah, it's delicious. And it's very economical, the remains of Sunday lunch. But there's no sense in needless extravagance. Edward, take my plate away. I'm not hungry. I'm not surprised you've no appetite. Ah, I see it all now. Retribution for being home late last night from the regimental dinner. Punishment with cottage pie. Well? I'll take my punishment like a man. Edward, bring me some more cottage pie. Nevertheless, Hazel, I hope that when the Comtesse de Tournay and her brother dine here next Wednesday, we shall not be served with cottage pie. Oh, I had considered it. Richard, mm? is it customary to curtsy to a woman of title from France? Not that I know of. Is she very grand? Well, frankly, I can't remember meeting her. Still, it's a large family. It wouldn't be that dreadful Louise de Tierney. Oh, no, 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 of course not. It couldn't be. She was over 70 when I was in the Foreign Office. So, which one is it? Oh, well, we shall all know on Wednesday.
Now then, Ruby, you better get on with the breadcrumbs. Oh, is that to finish chopping up tomatoes first, Mrs. Bridges? No, my girl, I'll see to that. Now then, let me see. Where's my menu book? Um, is this it, Mrs. Bridges? Well, what do you think it is, my prayer book? And wipe your sticky fingers before you hand things to me. Now, where are we? Ah, oh, yes. Consomme. That's on. Uh, so, Mary Louise with Montpellier butter, yes. That's all ready. Saddle of lamb, that's easy. With scarlet tongue garnish. Scarlet tongue. <gasps> Haven't done that for years. Pally de Parmesan, yes. That's the cheese straws. Only I'm going to use cheddar. That Parmesan has a nasty foreign flavour. Oh, I must say, it's lovely doing a French menu again. Even though it is only for five. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Bridges. Yes? If you want to spare a moment. Oh, yes. What is it? Yeah, this is uh, Gwyneth Davis, the new underhouse parlour maid, come to help Rose. Oh, yes. For you, Mrs. Bridges, a bunch of wildflowers. Oh, they're very modest. But I spent Sunday in the country, and I'd like to bring a little of that pleasure to you. I trust you find my references in order, Mr. Hudson. The agency, I've checked them, and Madam has taken them up over the telephone with my last lady. Nonetheless, it's proper for you to see them in writing. Well, that was kind. Very kind, indeed. Yeah, come along, Would you mean water, please, Ruby? Would you be Rose? Yes, I would. I'll do my best to learn the ways of the household quickly, Rose, and I look forward to working happily and well under your direction. Oh, yes. You are welcome here, Gwyneth. Since I see you are stated in the most glowing terms to be uh, honest, sober, clean, industrious, neat, tidy in person. Yes, that's quite right. And in work, regular and systematic, precise in the care of stoves and ornaments, a clever dressmaker, and as a hairdresser, both discreet and watchful, conversant with haute cuisine, and able to wait well at table and indeed to carve. Carve? I can't carve. The master in my last place gave me lessons. Yes, well, I think we'll excuse the reason for you leaving your last place, Gwyneth. Well, what's that, Miss Drudson? Uh, desirous of change, Mrs. Bridges. She's very young. Hot cuisine, eh? <clears throat> well, now, Gwyneth, uh, tell me, um, what would you do if a mayonnaise curdled? Add a tablespoonful of iced water and beat it till it emulsifies once more. Oh. <laughs> I must say. If I could be shown to my room, I could change and start my afternoon work. Idleness is abhorrent to me. My hands quite dance about from lack of occupation. Yes, well, if you'll follow me to the pantry, Gwyneth, I'll give you a written terms of service. We follow many of the old ways here. A glass of ale a day, one day off a month. Two hours on Sunday mornings for church, uh, or chapel. Every second Sunday evening off, wages regularly and quarter day. Uh, washing provided. Maybe she snores. Must be something the matter with her. There is. She's Welsh. Nothing is the same since poor Andre was taken from me. Andre? My sister's last husband, the late Comte de Tournay. He is dead five years last autumn. Oh, dear. I, I'm so sorry. Mm. Without André, I am unhappy in Vienna. So each year, I travel around Europe with court. To Paris for a little, Monte Carlo, Budapest, Berlin, Rome. And now here I am in London. On your way to New York. Isn't that what you told my daughter-in-law? Yes. My sister's confused. We go to New York next month. Uh, but London is so beautiful, Kurt. I think I should like to stay here for a while. Well, I hope you will. Then I can show you around a little. Oh, that would be delightful. And when Parliament reassembles and my father is busy in the House of Commons all day, I hope you'll call on me. Oh. We could go for a punt in the river or a ride in the park. Oh, I love horses. I should explain. My husband works in an office all day. Well, perhaps a stroll in the botanical gardens to see the roses would be less strenuous. Oh, yes, I do. Dearly love roses. They give some people hay fever. So do horses. But they are the most persevering of flowers, are they not? And such beautiful names. 
Souvenir de Malmaison, mm -hmm. hmm? Sweet Maiden's Blush. Yeah, that's a lot. Put it in there. Pull that, and it'll all go down. It's not smooth running. Never is. Never mind. Gwyneth will fetch a can of oil to it in the morning. Oh, thank you. The master in my last place... Master in your last place did teach you a lot. He did. And I became the object of his unlawful and unbridled lust. His eyes would strip the clothes from my poor female body. That's why I had to leave. Please, Edward. As I was saying, the parlour maid had followers in the kitchen on the cook's night out. Our local Bobby, too. As I was saying, they would be quite unchaperoned for at least five and twenty minutes. I wouldn't dare go in for fear of what I might see. Go on, Ruby. Collect up the dirt. It's look sharp. Yes, Mrs. Bridges. Tell me about your English Parliament. Kurt tells me you are a most important personage. Oh, no, not really. No. But you make the laws, yes? Oh, I like a man who makes laws. Strong men make laws. Well, unfortunately, my party is not in office at the moment. Oh. No, my father merely opposes the laws that the present government tried to pass. But to oppose, one must be even stronger. Are you interested in politics? Oh, yes. Our Prime Minister is a very old and close friend. Oh, yes, such a nice man, Count Sturck. Yes. I'm very sorry to read in the Times that he'd abandoned the Bohemian diet. I know, much too fat. I meant the Czech Provincial Assembly. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. <laughs> you know, for the life of me, I can't remember meeting you at the Hoffmannstadt's. But how could one forget a person of such charm? To tell the truth, I also cannot remember meeting you. But we are together now, so... <laughs> it is my brother who tells me we have met before. Yeah. And what my brother says, I must accept. Yes. <laughs> no doubt your brother has a livelier... Imagination? I was going to say a livelier memory than yours. He has. <clears throat> it is a most delicious bird. I'm glad you're enjoying the grass, Herr Schnabel. And I am delighted to renew its acquaintance. My sister and I spent a delightful month last year in Hampshire at Lord Boromare's. I painted, Lily joined the grouse shoots. Grouse? In Hampshire? Pheasants, only. Pheasants? Yes, of course. Lily shot many, did you not, my dear? She's very deadly with a gun. Shot her husband, she did, five years ago. The Comte de Tournay. Oh, no. Yeah, it's common knowledge in the Crown and Anchor. Well, he came after her with a gun. There was a struggle, and he got killed. Lord Ellerdale's valley told me over a pint of beer. He was there when it happened. Did Lord Ellerdale's valley say why he was after her with a gun? Oh, that's not for your ears, Gwyneth. Or yours, Ruby. Oh, go and tell us. Please. Well, he found her in a fragrante delicado with a baron de Ras. In what? In bed. <gasps> that's what they call a crime of passions, isn't it? Hey. Well, they hushed it up, naturally. The de Tourney family contested the will, so she wouldn't get a penny. Only the clothes she stood up in. <laughs> or laid down in. How does she live? On her wits and worse. What does that mean? I'm not going to give you ideas, Ruby. Anyway, now she's after Mr Bellamy, plain as a pike star. All that talk of the Boromir's estate, she's never been in Hampshire in her life, I'll be bound. How can you be so sure? Because I know a rogue when I see one. After all, I'm a bit of one myself. Ooh! Oh, Gwyneth, the, uh, the silver corkscrew with the sealed brush is missing. Look for it in the dining room first thing in the morning, if you please. Shall I go now, Mr. Hudson? Everything must be accounted for at the end of every working day. Oh, very well, Gwyneth. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Here we are. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Half past eleven. <laughs> Quite like old times, isn't it? So, they appreciated their dinner, did they, Mr. Oh, Hudson? Oh, indeed, Mrs. Bridges. <laughs> And is she a very charming lady? Most entertaining. <laughs> and she spoke very highly of the cheese straws. Oh, I knew I was right not to use the parmesan. You know, the master smiled again tonight. 
Not just once, but frequently. Now ah, that's a change. In that case, I hope she comes here often, and often and often. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh, who's that? It's the new maid, sir. Gwyneth, sir. Oh, good evening, Gwyneth. I hope I'm not disturbing you, sir, but Mr. Hudson sent me to look for the corkscrew. Oh, is that it? It was under the table? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Well, I hope you're going to be very happy with us, Gwyneth. Oh, I think so, sir. Well, good night. Poor man. Huh? Forgive me, my lady. Well, I hated telling all those lies, little brother. You spoke nothing but the truth, I think. I spoke from my imagination. But of course, it's a good one. Ooh. I'm a very creative person. Now, when you go to see the roses with Bellamy? The picture gallery first. Then the Botanical Gardens, ah. Friday. Then, tomorrow you will spend in the library, finding out all about English landscape painting and details of all that is to be seen in the gallery. Oh, Kurt, you can't still be hungry. On Friday, you will wear something that sets off your shoulders well. Why? Because Richard Bellamy appreciates shoulders. How do you know that? From one of the paintings of his wife in the house. I hope they are as rich as I assume. I must make some more inquiries. Possibly the Southwold Guild is wearing a little thin. He had a somewhat dusty and defeated look. But so attractive. Oh, hello. Oh, where's your father? Hmm? I thought he was coming with us to Harrington. Mm, my father is about to escort the Comtesse to Ternay to the picture gallery. Oh, is he? Life in the old dog yet, eh? I can't help but be amused to see you both are taken in. Hmm? She is quite insincere. Hmm, possibly, but very alluring and stinking rich, no doubt. How do you know? All the Detonais are. Perhaps he'll marry her. James. Oh, what he needs. He can move out of here, start another family. She's much too old. Oh, she's not 30. She's 30. I'm Queen Victoria. <laughs> Come on. I do want to order those chintzes today. But how can he get to the picture gallery without a cab? He's going to walk there. Walk? Yes, through Green Park. That's why he's asked me to put him out a pair of really strong shoes. Strong shoes? In town? For walking through the park with a scarlet woman. No, that's enough, Edward. God, that's not half the stories I've heard about him, Mr. Then Trump. shut your ears, my boys. I have. The Countess de Tournay is a titled widow of ample means, and it is not our place to pass moral judgment on the behaviour of our betters. That is for the Lord above. Besides, a wee walk through the park might do the master a power of good. But you just said... He needs to get some fresh air before the winter sets in. Well, it's only August. Be quiet, Edward. The master doesn't get out nearly enough, you know. Well, the stories I've heard in the Crown and Acre are certainly different. There's one...
very fine. Such power and color. And the sky, magnificent. So physical. Very exciting. Joseph Mallard William Turner, 1775 to 1851. It was the beginning of his central period, you know. Under the influence, influence of, of the, the Italian, Italian Renaissance. Renaissance. <laughs> You're very knowledgeable, my dear. Well, I make a study of these things. I am the sister of a painter. Of course. Kurt often declares he would give his left arm to paint like Turner. Perhaps he will one day. Uh, paint like Turner. I fear not. It is not given to many of us to realize our true talents or to express our true natures. Lily, what is your true nature? I think it is to be happy. And yours? Perhaps the same. Oh, goodness. You did sort through that laundry thorough before you send it off. Every single garment rose, like I always do. It's just that Mr. Bellamy's lost a gold cufflink. Just one. I was hoping he might have left him in one of his shirts, that's all. I haven't seen no cufflink. There's our dinner laid up. Shall I cut the bread for our dinner, Mrs. Bridges? Oh, no, dear. Ruby will do that. Oh. Oh, my heart burnt. <coughs> Ever since her ladyship died, it's been giving me fair chip. I know a special remedy. I'll make it up for you, Mrs. Bridges. Oh. Three drums magnesia of rhubarb in powder, one scruple, one ounce of cinnamon water. The mixture tastes delightful, allays pain and destroys flatulency. I'll make it up for you after work tonight. Oh, do it for me now, would you, dear? Very well. I'll get the ingredients straight after dinner. Ruby, I need some more grapes peeled. That water should be boiling hot. What smells so delicious? Quiche Lorraine. The Countess to turn his favourite dish. Oh, is she coming here again? Has to, don't she? She go hungry else. What do you mean, Ruby? You foolish, ignorant creature. She's a French Countess. Only by marriage. She's Viennese. And she's living at the Savoy Hotel. Cast off without a penny, having shot her husband. Oh. And Lady Digger Cave went into a dress shop and found her husband buying her a dress. And so she slapped her face in public. And then she had a screaming fit, just like you and me. Well, me? Who's been telling you this wicked nonsense? Edward. James, mm -hmm. couldn't you investigate her? Well, just a little. <laughs> well, how do you investigate someone a little? Besides, anyone's fortune hunting, it's father, not Lily. No, I think we should wish him happy hunting and a rich wife. She hasn't come yet. It's not one o'clock. Hazel, now, this is quite ridiculous. My favourite typing is missing. One little thing after another. Your typing? Well, Rose did tell me that your cufflink turned up again as if by magic. Oh. So why not look a little more carefully for your favourite to type in? It's nearly one o'clock and I cannot go to lunch without a pin in my cravat. You mean your favourite pin? In your smartest cravat. Quite right, Father. As Hudson would say, standards. Now, myself, I think I'm going to pop upstairs and change into my best tie. Maroon has a certain gaiety, don't you think? No. A turquoise cravat pin and a small red leather case. Well? I've not seen it, Mr. Hudson, and I've turned his room out thorough. Ruby. <laughs> what would she want with a cravat pin? Anyway, she's not allowed in the rooms upstairs. Well, I haven't seen it, Mr. Hudson. Gwyneth? Oh, no, Mr. Hudson. I'd never go in a gentleman's bedroom. Not since my last place. Where I became the object of my employer's unlawful and unbridled lust, see? 
His eyes would strip the clothes from my poor female body. Yes, yes, all and... right. Thank you, Gwyneth. Now, I want you all to keep a sharp lookout for this cravat pin. On the stairs. On the landings. In all the rooms in every corner. I intend to find it. Or whoever it was that took it. Now, you may go about your duties. What are you doing, Gwyneth? I thought afternoon work was quite over. I'm not at all tired, madam. I was tied in your desk, madam. Thank you. But there's no need. I'm quite fascinated by the different colours seen in the pattern around this side of your desk, madam. It's been exposed to rather more sunshine than the other side, has it not, madam? You do have a healthy curiosity, Gwyneth. And you're very knowledgeable. Oh, thank you, madam. May I confide in you, madam? Well, yes, of course. What is it? Madam, why is everyone so blind? They see only what they want to see. Edward is quite right, and so is Ruby. What about? The Countess de Tourney is a wicked woman. She killed her husband in Vienna and had her face slapped by Lady Digby Cave in a dress shop. Oh, really, Gwyneth? She's quite penniless, and her brother lives off what gentlemen give her. Yet she's here to lunch nearly every day, and poor Mr. Bellamy's quite taken Thank in. Thank you, Gwyneth. How do you know all this? Well, I shall have to explain. And since you've been gracious enough to engage me in your household, I feel I owe it to you to be honest about my true identity. Yes? I beg you, Mrs. Bellamy, never to reveal it to a living soul. I feel I can trust you. Oh, of course you can. I am the natural daughter of the Viscountess Ellerdale, you see by her husband's estate agent. His lordship had me well cared for and educated, but I chose domestic service. You see, although I cannot be accepted in society, as a servant, I can live among those who are. Well, thank you, Gwyneth, for warning me about the Countess and for telling me all about yourself. I will respect your confidence. You're not angry, madam. No, I'm not. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Gwyneth. Charming. Oh, quite charming. And, and, and most evocative. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> this is really rather scandalous, Lily. <laughs> What, for us to be here on chaperone? Yes. Well, this is an artist studio, and to artists, all things are allowed. You think so? Yes. <laughs> oh, well. Sorry. I have devoted much of my life, not so much to my brother, perhaps, but to his talent. Since our parents died, I have been a mother to it. Oh, I, I, I like his work. Though I suspect he would not wish me to. It has um, a, a deliberate... Um, uh, a perversity, I, I think. Yes? <laughs> Lily, I... Richard, my brother who depends upon me for money. Lily. Oh, I get so tired of hiding things. Oh, my poor Lily. I am very fond of you, Richard. Uh, and I of you. You have the most... The most beautiful shoulders. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but you are so beautiful. Yes, and we are here alone, and now I am quite helpless. 
Forgive me. Oh, it's not a question of forgiveness, but of honesty. I am a, a scandalous lady, Richard. <laughs> I don't mind very much the moment, my dearest. Oh, but you should. I am really very wicked. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, I shot my husband. There was a quarrel. It was his gun, meant for me. And there was an accident. I was declared innocent by the police. I did not love my husband. He did not expect me to. He was 25 years older than me. I was very young. But I married him so Kurt could have his paints and canvases. Oh, Kurt is very extravagant. Then I met a man I did love, the Baron Daras. I could not help myself. That is my nature. It is to love. But so few are worth the loving, Richard. Am I? Well, if you kissed me again, I might know for sure. You will be compromised, Lily. Oh, yes, Richard, please. Lily. Mm. Wait, what? Richard, what? wait. Also, Lady Digby Cave slapped my face in a dress shop recently <laughs> when her husband was buying me a dress. <laughs> well, she did not think it was funny. You're adorable, Lily. I love you. I'll buy you a dozen dresses to join the thousand you have already. I... Mm. What now? I don't want gifts from you, Richard. I want more. I want your soul. If you can find it, you can have it. Have you any more confessions? Oh, many, many, many. I won't believe them, but do go on. You have the most fascinating mouth, especially when you were saying those dreadful things. Mr. Bellamy, I'm appalled. You, an English gentleman, take advantage of my absence in this way when I have eaten at your table. Kurt, what is the matter with you? What is the matter with you, sister? Shall I throw you out, sir, or will you go? <laughs> I will go. I can remember this sort of occurrence from my extreme youth. Only then it was husbands, not brothers. Oh, Richard, dearest. Have lunch with me tomorrow. Oh, we shall see. I'll meet you downstairs in the foyer at one o'clock. Richard. We'll go somewhere quiet. Just in time, I hope. We were mistaken, you see. That man's not wealthy. <laughs> Lady Marjorie left the bulk of her estate to the daughter and son. <laughs> we have wasted our time. <laughs> Kindly have mercy on me and order me some tea. <laughs> I like him better than any man I have ever met. Our minds match, Kurt. Then you must not see him again, lest your liking of him gets the better of your common sense. Could I not be allowed to love? Just a little. Don't deceive yourself, Lily. You have not the capacity. <laughs> and who has made me thus? Not I. You are a woman made like a man with promiscuous desires. It is your misfortune. Please don't, But Kurt. is it not true? Yes, it is true. Other women do not seem to be like me. Oh, they talk much of love and romance. But what really happens between a man and a woman, they choose to forget. In the gutters, there is more honesty. There speaks my lily. Now. There is a certain Spencer Stanton of Greenwich, a wealthy shipping merchant. Lily, don't look so downcast. By the way, how much of the truth did you tell Bellamy? Enough. Of your interesting past? Another five minutes and I would have told him much more. Then, my dear, I'm afraid you would have seen the back of him. You think so, huh? Mm-hmm. Perhaps. <laughs> Have you ever been in love, Rose? Once. Tell me about it. It's not for telling. 
I'm in love, Rose. Still see him? Yes. When? Every day. Who is it? It's my secret. Never seek to tell your love, love that never can be told. That's a poem. Blake. Never heard of him. Rose, have you ever, you know, like they do upstairs, country weekends and that? No, of course I've not. I think it's disgusting. Well, you can understand the men with common women or even us maids who can't help ourselves sometimes. But that ladies should allow it. And they're so grand and their clothes so special. I don't understand it. I think the good Lord should have arranged things more decent. You. Yeah. My mother and father were quite happy. All cosy and warm. Of course, they're dead now. But they lay in side by side in the same grave, just like they did in bed. Don't speak like that. People must take their happiness where they find it. When I was little, a man showed himself to me. Oh, Gwyneth. All the wickedness in the world put in one place to get me. I ran and ran. I, I couldn't tell my mum. Poor soul, she was ill, dying. Oh, I should never have left her in the first place and it wouldn't have happened. No, you mustn't think like that. I do. I, I try to be good always, Rose, but sometimes I can't help myself. What do you mean? I can't keep my mouth shut. I make up stories, see? And I do dreadful things. Oh, can I tell you? Please. Then I'll have to give my notice. It's the master. What about him? Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Gwyneth. Oh. What do you say? Oh, I, I must have something of his to keep. Then I put the others back, see? It's like a kind of talisman. Otherwise, I get very tired, I think. All the work I do. Mrs. Bridges, <laughs> could you come here a moment, please? You're needed. The contest to Ternay is quite plainly unsuitable. Yes, James. She's an adventuress. A murderess, they say. Yes, James. An adulteress, too. Possibly. If uh, you wish to be seen in public with such a woman, I can't stop you. Thank you for your permission, James. Richard. Mm. Your tie pin has been found. And your other single cufflink. Where? Here, let me do it. In the apron pocket of the new maid. Oh. Is she a uh, little mad, do you think? Oh, not mad, but a little eccentric, certainly. Oh, if she's dishonest, Hazel, you must dismiss her. I think that's a little harsh, James. No, 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 servants. Only take advantage of kindness. That's what Mother always used to say. Give them an inch and they take a mile. She must go at once. No. Reprimand her. And then forget about it. Those are my orders, James. What would she want with a single cufflink and a tie pin? She has conceived a fondness for you, Richard. Oh, no. Really? Yes. Poor creature. Well, she'll get over it. I must go to luncheon with uh, Lily. Let off, eh? It's more than you deserve, my girl. I don't know what comes off of me. From now on, you must pray for guidance to the Almighty Father, my girl, that he might deliver you from the powers of temptation. Here on Earth, you can be sure that we'll be keeping a close watch on you. Please watch me and save me. You see, 
I hurt inside. I'm lonely. <laughs> get the winter curtains up on my own. Only, please try not to do everything better than me. I'll try not. Oh, and Rose, the attic grates are in a shocking state, quite rusted in some parts. Oh, but... You will see to it that Gwyneth makes up some of her excellent Brunswick black and attends to them. Uh, and I'll take you out walking one Sunday, Gwyneth. If Miss Dryson lets me, of course. It's not fair. What's not fair, Ruby? Nothing, Mrs. Bridges. It won't do, of course. Of course not. But it's as bad as the other. I know. But we are much nicer than the people around us. Oh. Yes. But we must love them. We have our duties to them. And we cannot hurt them. I suppose not. Will you be very grieved? Oh, a little. You? Well, uh, I'm a man for marriage or nothing. I don't think either of us can afford to marry without money. No. Richard, it is a lovely day. After lunch, I should like to walk along the river to Chelsea. We must enjoy what we have which is the day, and each other. Tomorrow I am to meet Mr. Spencer Stanton of Greenwich. Greenwich? Oh, dear. How else is a woman to live? It is that, or take in washing. We all live as we must, I think. You are right. We must try to enjoy this day. This evening we shall part, go back to our everyday lives and our boring tasks. These moments are precious. They should be gathered in and treasured. They're all we have. Where might you be off to? Away. Do not disturb yourself, Mrs. Bridges. I've left a little note for Mrs. Bellamy on the hall table. Do you mean to say you're sneaking off without giving notice nor nothing? That's right. I'm on my way. Why? Like I said, I'm desirous of change. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> 